local DPH approval on the sanitary system that's now going uh, to review with the state. Uh, so the regulatory process is kind of working its way through. Uh, we've achieved a couple of, uh, of benchmark approvals and we're, we're currently on schedule for the inland wetlands and planning and zoning meetings. So, Excellent. Uh, if there are any questions on what we're working on or what we anticipate uh, presenting, um, I'll be free. Feel f I will be welcome to answer them. I, I think I think I'm good on my end. Adam, did you want to read uh, Sharon's? I don't know what the appropriate time is for Sharon's comments. I was going to look at those remarks, but I can I can read it now since we're talking about design aesthetics and whatnot. Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, so it just came through a few moments ago, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Sharon uh, Shoemaker couldn't uh, make it this evening, but she wanted me to read this uh, this snippet um, in an email. Uh, so it's in the record and then I'll print it out and put it in the, uh, the packet afterwards. Um, it's with regard to the entrance canopy. Um, so, uh, uh, want to tell you my concerns about the design of the entrance canopy. So if I'm not on there, please read this for me. Um, I realized Tecton was going to be working on the design, so this may be moot, but my concerns about the way it was in the design development drawings were not only a difficult high maintenance detail, but I have sincere concerns about the design aesthetic. We as a committee were aggressive with putting in our RFP last year that the building needs to blend with our quaint colonial town. I truly understand that a school is a big box and there's not much we can do to make it fit into a colonial New England vernacular without an unlimited budget. Um, Tecton has done a fantastic job with the floor plan, making it as tight as possible to work with our energy efficiency requirements uh, and the way they hid the large masses of building within the building core and the slope of the site is genius. So the only area where we have opportunity for fun, playful, interactive design that can give a nod to our New England colonial vernacular is the entry canopy. As it is designed in the DD set, the canopy is very mid-century modern, 1960s-ish futuristic design. Very cool, but more appropriate for a college level tech engineering building than a K-5 elementary school. I think we need to ask Antonia a fabulous Tecton asset that helped them win this project, what she thinks a child would experience walking through the canopy that was on the DD set. Personally, Go ahead. I'm, uh... Okay. Uh, personally, if I were five or six years old, I would think it looks like a sharp pointed hand that is cranked up poised to slap, i.e. very threatening. Maybe we can scale it down do a stylized peak roof with a funky cute cupola with a school bell in it. To be wrong on the first day and last day of school, a nod to a colonial New England schoolhouse. Maybe a student can be chosen at random to ring it. Maybe we can put chain downspouts on it. When my daughter was eight and saw a chain downspout working, she was mesmerized and enthralled. That might be a fun interactive thing. I'm just spitballing. Take or leave the suggestions. It's up to our designers to come up with something I just want it to be more age appropriate and fun. Thanks for hearing me out, Sharon. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Adam. I don't know if it's my place to inter interject, but my only comment would be: um, Is there any way that I can you can forward uh, me? Oh, yeah. the, yes, okay. that's uh, this will be put into the meeting folder as part of the the record from the meeting since it was read into the record. So, yep, you'll have it. Okay. Uh, Thank well, you. One question I did have was the the uh, ACA committee. I did they had they had a strong opinion about that. And maybe if you could, Justin, if you could refresh our memories on what where that stood and how that their position so, on the canopy. Um, the, one of one of their conditions uh, for recommendation to approve was to bring uh, back because in the interim between the DD. Uh, uh, set and some modifications that we had made from the first ACA presentation was we flattened the canopy uh, so that it did not have a taper or a flare up. Um, 
and uh, their one of their conditions for recommendation to approve uh, was to bring that back. Uh, now, I think I think we're getting a. I think first of all, wonderful comments from Sharon. Um, I think um, she's given us a little bit more of a flavor for what her her thoughts are for that canopy. Um, so I think we we have a little bit more to respond to. Um, and uh, you know maybe there's maybe there's a way that we can marry marry the two um, concepts. So uh, I think let us take a look at it, and um, you know I'm sure I'm sure we'll have a discussion that uh, in two weeks as well. I was uh, I was at that ACA meeting when they were discussing the the it was the raised. Um, flag like canopy entrance and then it became flat in the version they saw and they wanted to go back. So it was largely a, um, the, the commentary, if I'm summarizing it correctly, was was around having a, a prominent entrance that had some some dimensionality to it and not just be the, the flat roof. So to Justin's point, there may, there's, there's likely some uh, middle ground there that accomplishes both sets without just being the, the, the proverbial flat roof. So. Yeah. What what's the angle of the uh, the pitch above flat just offhand? What what's the, what's the history of zero to ninety degrees to what what was the what was the slope of the roof initially? It it, it it was uh, approximately yeah yeah I mean it, it it went from our standard kind of uh, ten foot canopy up to about fifteen or sixteen feet over the course of the the canopy. It, it, I couldn't tell you that's if that's a you know four and twelve, five and twelve. Um, okay. It's not a conventional pitch, uh, okay. but I can get that information. Okay, I mean for you. it was pronounced. I guess that's what I'm saying. It's, yes. It wasn't yep. five percent. It was it was pretty pronounced. No. So one of the things when we were responding to the original comments about you know constructability and um, water infiltration and making sure that we had a opportunity. We weren't creating more maintenance problems um, from Sharon. Uh, those comments from Sharon, we flattened it in the interim and tried to work within something a little bit more conventional. I would say, um, so that's where that's where it landed. And you have an internal gutter, I assume, in the back, or we, at one point you had an, an internal gutter along the back. Yeah, or... I mean the entire building uh, is is uh, handles. Uh, rainwater through roof drains and internal uh, roof leaders, rainwater leaders. Right. Got it. Hmm. Okay. And I guess planning and zoning, this is act as advisory to them anyway. Right. Yeah. So I guess that, is that in the record of their report? It is in the record of the report. Yes. Okay. Got it. Okay, uh, well, thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, does, anyone, does anyone else have any questions or comments for Justin? Uh, moving on to the construction manager's update. Nick? Yes, good evening. Wondering if I can share my screen. Uh, here we go. Should I get the right one? Okay. You guys uh, live on my screen there? Yep. Okay. So this is uh, an updated uh, site logistics plan uh, based on the DD set. Uh, if you recall, we submitted one with our, um, in our response to the RFP and, and talked about it in the interview, but at that stage it was largely conceptual based on, uh, you know, Tecton just getting on board at that point. So um, we've refined it a little bit. There's a couple challenges that we still got to work through. Um, but just to, to walk you through where we're at at this stage, um, this is a, an outline of the, of the site. The white is, is the property line or thereabout. I did not get someone to survey it, but I think I got pretty close on my overlay. Um, anything in blue, whether it's dashed or solid lined, is future permanent work. Anything that isn't is temporary. So just to kind of get everyone's bearings, this is Munger Road coming down vertically on the left-hand side of the page. You can obviously see the new building footprint from, um, from Justin's team. Got the geo field, dashed as underground, so I'm showing that as underground. And then the parking lots and the drives. Here in the north end, 
parking lots and drives on the south end, ball field way down in the southeast corner, and then the septic systems up along Munger Town Road. So when we mobilize, there's really there's three things that, that we hit right away. Uh, the first is installing this uh, perimeter fence, perimeter construction fence, which is here in red with the circles on it. At the same time, uh, we're also uh, installing our permanent, or I'm sorry, our temporary sediment and control measures. So this yellow line that rings the site is the silt fence, which you've all seen, I'm sure, a million times. It's the knee-high black silt with one-by-one one, uh, wood stakes driven into the ground to, to retain any sediment that, that leaves the site through water. Um, in addition to that, the orange lines here are hay bales or wood chips. I think um, Banesh called out uh, uh, hay bales, which is probably what we'll end up using given that there's not a ton of clearing on this site. There won't be an abundance of wood chips, but otherwise we could use that if there was. Uh, and then these brown, there's two locations. Brown images here are where Banesh largely, for the most part, showed uh, temporary sediment traps. So the storm water uh, hits the site. It's going to all sheet, uh, obviously, toward uh, uh, the river, right? That's the lowest elevation. I think Banesh had uh, that sediment trap more up in this region. We kind of bumped it down a little bit here to give ourselves a little bit more room and also because the area around it may may incur some sediment as well as far as the amount of sediment it really it's tough to to discern that from you know the geotech report we've done jobs where the geotech has shown you know a tremendous amount of silt and it's actually a pretty good site there's not a ton of silt it's it's material that can be reused on site we've had jobs where it looks like it's something we could read soil we could reuse on site and it turns out it's essentially you know, baby powder, it's so fine and silty. So once we get on site, we'll, we'll get a better idea of that. But um, these are the two sediment traps here. And then the brown dashed lines are really just diversion swales to kind of feed the water uh, to those locations during construction. Uh, this blob here is our soil stockpile. A little bit up in the air on where to put that. But right now that's the, uh, the leader in the clubhouse in terms of where, where to locate it. Um, down the southern end of the site. I'm sorry, the eastern end of the site. Uh, these shaded red areas on the north and south. So the south would be Gilbane's field office uh, and, and uh, other trade offices from the subcontractors. The major the major subs, probably five or six of them, will have will have trailers on site. This is certainly a big enough job that would would uh, necessitate that. And then uh, up on the north would be material laydown. Uh, uh, material lay down area. So as we get material that comes on site before it gets installed, it usually hits that, that location uh, wherever it ends up being on site. But for now, we're, we're showing it up here, and I think that's probably where it ends up staying. We have talked about whether or not to put our offices up here as opposed to down here. I think from a power standpoint, it may be easier up here, but it just seems like there's a bit more buffer uh, down here. So uh, in terms of the, the proximity to the neighbors. So we felt like a laydown area might be might be better up against the, the closer neighbor uh, to the closer house. So a um, couple challenges. Obviously, we've got the septic system on this site, which is unique. It's up along Munger Town Road. We typically would have all of our trailers, field offices, parking uh, during construction would all be up along this road, uh, just because we don't want to we don't want to run cars around the site if we can help it. Just because there's heavy machinery and equipment that run around the site as well, so no sense in intermingling, you know, the, those two. But because we have the septic system here and there's a fair amount of work there, uh, it doesn't really make sense for us to to go there. Um, and then uh, one of the other challenges also is the site utilities. Uh, as we know, it we have a, a really long run. Uh, east on Green Hill, on Green Hill Road. Uh, as far as on the site, though, for the most part, it's fairly tidy. It all kind of comes in in one location. We don't have power coming in on the southern end. Uh, we don't have gas, which is great. Otherwise, you know, the power and gas usually aren't in the same location. Um, so we've got uh, the two blue dash lines here. Uh, the blue uh, is the force main. It gets it up to the it gets the uh, sanitary up to the septic area, and then this inside one is fire and water. And that fire and water. That fire tees off to the north to pick up a hydrant on the north uh, west corner of the site and then also tees and picks up a, quite a long run picks up one hydrant there on the 
the southwest corner of the site. So, um, site logistics and and, and uh, it's a fluid process that you know we we get going about this time during design phase, and then as we approach construction, it'll get tweaked. More detail will get thrown in. We'll probably shift some things around, but. We'll update you all uh, as we do that, just so you're in the loop. And if you, obviously, if you have any comments now or throughout the, design, the rest of the design phase, uh, please let us know. But and, then, and again, when I say it's fluid, it's not just in the design phase. We've we've set jobs up before and and uh, realized that that what we had schemed up probably wasn't either the best way to go about it or wasn't most conducive uh, if it was an active campus for learning to to still occur in the other schools. So we'll tweak on site as we, as we need to as well uh, but this is this is kind of our, our first detailed pass at it anyway and, uh, and again we'll, we'll refine it as we go any questions yeah Nick the uh, the fences to the north and south are they going to be just regular construction fences or can you get like a, a screen there so as a visual block or something like that yeah definitely so it'll be a, a six foot high driven fence that'll have a, a red scrim full height uh, running across it so it will provide some some privacy we may be able on that north side um, and the south if, if desired to maybe go a little bit higher i don't know if a seven or eight foot fence may be possible but uh, we could we could look into that but that's about as probably as high as we could end up going but it'll definitely have a, a visual scrim helps not only um, you know from the people that are that live around the site to look in but it, it does help keep some of the the dust and whatnot from from blowing across uh, from our property into theirs. Can you get that Turner branding on there too, or can you go <laughs> branding? <I'm sorry. laughs> Either one was just fine with me. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. A little slip there. So it's okay. Oh, good. Got it. okay. Great. Any, any other questions for the uh, team? Uh, one other thing to point out, I do show the ball field down here and us not having any real temporary work or storage or, or stockpiling down there. There was some conversation a few months back about uh, having that ball field be playable when the new school opens or when the kids return to school following the summer when the building's complete. Um, there's two ways to achieve that. One is sod, which I think we'd like to stay away from if possible. The other would be that we would have to seed that a season early. So right now we're showing it as if it's kind of a hands-off area, um, but uh, you know, to be honest, I'm, a, I'm still a little bit skeptical if we can that we can make it work without it, and that's largely driven by do we have enough capacity and volume in the two sediment basins to handle the stormwater that hits the site during the construction phase, um, because this would be the, the the most optimal area if we needed to increase these, we can increase them in area a little bit, but this would really be the area is really the, the kind of the lower end of the site uh, to pick up some more capacity if needed. Yeah, I'd also be worried, a little concerned about how deep you could make them before you hit groundwater. So, I mean, it's a... That's another concern too. Yeah, it's a, it, it looks good on paper when it's a smaller area and you can dig it five or six feet deep, but when the water's two and a half feet down, you can only, you can only go so far down without, without losing capacity, so... Yeah, okay, and the ball, I think the ball field, that's a bid alternate, right? I believe Adam is that full. I'm trying to remember at the end of the day, did we make that a bid alternate or not? No, we uh we took uh value engineering for sod out, okay? So seeding was the is the in scope basis, so um, that's one of those where if we get down to the wire and there's extra money and that that field need to be uh taken out, that might be a, a win. A last a later swap that could be done if there's you know money floating everywhere at the end of the job but otherwise right now base scope is is seed i i will also just reiterate that it is a ball field in the loosest sense of the term uh yeah. in in the sense that it is a it, it's open green space for recreation it's not it's not an actual structure it's a stadium doctor yeah. field yeah, it's not sized it's it's at most it's a a u12 bas uh, yeah. soccer court right yeah and wouldn't even be crowned. Well, it'd be a little crown maybe, but just by by habit. Mm -hmm. But we we have quite a few soccer fields in town, so this would just be recreation. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Any any other thoughts? Any any questions for Nick? 
I'll just say, uh, Nick, that looks like a well thought out plan. So um, kudos to you guys. And like you said, I'm sure it'll be fluid throughout construction and, you know, as, as things develop here, but uh, nice job. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be good neighbors to the uh, neighbors, obviously. And I agree with your uh, concern about putting the trailer by that neighbors over there. I was out there this weekend and uh, one of the neighbors looks like they're clearing and planting shrubs. So they're preparing on their own property to block us. So anything we can do, I think, to keep the impact to those neighbors on the north that are right there, yep. I think, think will be uh, appropriate. So I like, like those thinking. I like the way you're thinking. Okay, great. And I, I think we're going to put a permanent fence there at the end of the construction anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah, we talked about fencing and trees and meeting with the neighbors. We haven't really set that up. Uh, I was sort of going to sort of wait and see. You know, it's definitely something that we might want to meet with them. There's two neighbors. One's really close and has their pool uh, right to the the west. And the, one, the ones to the east are right there. They got that pond. Their, their house is very close. Yeah. I mean, I think they both attended the neighborhood workshop we had, but we haven't yeah. had any. Yeah. Yeah, I believe they're very reasonable. Yeah. I think, no, I, yeah. I, I think we want to be reasonable back. Yeah, might, maybe, might, might be a good eye. Now that we're going to zoning next week, maybe just a touch base. And if you, I think you have a connection with them, Bill. Maybe if you could just kind of reach out to them and, uh, I definitely do. I was hesitant to do that to see where they were, but if you'd like me to, I, I can definitely, you know, reach out to them tomorrow. But what do you want me to do? You want me to set up a meeting with the landscape people right before the meeting because it's going to be next week. You want to see? I was going to sort of wait and see how they, you know, if they had any concerns or issues, I was going to we'll address them. Yeah, I we'll, we'll talk offline. It's a you know, it's a question of strategy on how to. To do that, I do. I do want to, you know, whether they whether they attend the meeting, we. Uh, I think their their main thing was they wanted a fan, a solid fence along that that edge, right? For safety, yeah. for screening. So. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and, and we we I walked it with the landscape, Bob and I, and uh, the tree warden. We walked it. There's a bunch of big white pines that are really, in, you know, need to come down, and we need yeah. to put better trees there. Yeah, so. The I, I think that they realize that because they're definitely planting, uh, they're clearing their old, you know, sort of scrubby trees and they're putting, uh, it looks like to me, some nice arborvitaes along their pool area. Um, so it looks like they're, they're figuring it out. So whatever we can do to enhance. So we'll talk offline, but I, I think that, you know, they're, they're, they're at the meeting, they address their concerns. Uh, they've seemed very reasonable so I think we can work with them. Okay, good. Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna bend over backwards to accommodate them, obviously. Um, okay, uh, moving on. Uh, for any other, nothing else for uh, for Nick. So then now I guess we'll turn it over to Adam. Adam, if you got want your update. Yep. So I'll be I'll be pretty short tonight. Um, just so uh, folks can uh, tackle wetlands meetings and whatnot. Um, so by and large, uh, the uh, schedule, uh, we're kind of moving along. Let me share my screen here. So this, this got updated to the school building committee website. So the public has the, the latest, uh, latest and greatest. Um, so right now we're, we're here in, uh, in mid-May um, and the, in the throes of uh, local permitting and wrapping up um, the design development updates and estimate like Justin was talking about. Um, so the Tecton had sent out an updated uh, DD set uh, today. So um, Gobain and, and Colliers will take a look at that um, just to kind of get some of those items, as Justin mentioned, buttoned up as we move full, uh, full force into construction documents for details uh, start to really get fleshed out. Um, and then ultimately, uh, you know, as we start looking forward ahead towards the end of the year, one thing that uh, Justin and Nick and I have been focused on is identifying the milestones we need to hit in order to not only get our main package done, uh, but also our early package. So we have a meeting coming up with the state at the end of the month uh, to kind of broach this topic. And I know that 
Um, the topic has been initially broached with uh, some of the town leadership in terms of an early package for the, the electrical equipment and maybe some HVAC equipment. So all these items kind of, you, know, you go to the end, see when you need to go out to bid and start pull planning back as to when, when drawings have to be released so there's enough time to review, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, Justin and Nick and I are, are meeting weekly um, just a standing sort of an administrative meeting to identify what other things are coming up, make sure there's no issues, iron them out, hash them out, and, and uh, get things done on that front. So uh, as usual, a lot of stuff uh, going on behind the scenes uh, to, to make sure the documents are, are on time and uh, are working well. Um, otherwise, for this meeting is pretty short. Our, the next meeting is on the 20th, I recall because of the, the holiday on the 19th. Um, at the 20th, as Justin mentioned, we'll, we'll look at um, some of the updated visuals and target being to um, do the formal uh, advancement to construction document phase, um, just to kind of put DD behind us uh, with the updated DD set. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, the next month or two is largely wetlands planning and zoning and uh, really getting things buttoned up for this early procurement package, which will be a, a heavier lift on the mechanical engineer um, getting all their loads set, uh, making sure that uh, everything's understood so that way switch gear is right sized, if we order a generator, generator is right sized, that kind of thing. Um, otherwise, uh, I think that's about it for me because I read Sharon's thing. And uh, yeah. Any questions for me? No, just more of a comment about the schedule in June. So we're are going to be appearing in front of the planning and zoning. I mean, the uh, board of selectmen and the board of finance the week uh, 13th to 14th to kind of update them on the budget and to re formally request uh, some additional funding. Cause as you know, we're give or take six million, six to $7 million um, currently over the budget, which they've been informed of before. They're just working out the formality of how they could procure the extra funds um, officially. It's going to be a con probably a combination of, new funds and funds moved over from the other project, but they're working out the, the specifics of that and what's in and what's out of uh, the Paulson project, but all good. And they're still waiting to hear officially about the additional reimbursement from the state um, to five or $6 million, which obviously is gonna help the taxpayers, but doesn't necessarily help the uh, the referendum cap that we had. So, but we're, they're working, we're working through that with the, with the, the, um, the selectmen. So, um, and then, yeah, I almost forgot to mention the other, I had the uh, Board of Education meeting tomorrow night that uh, Dr. Cook and, and uh, Seth will work on with regard to those alternate items that were in the end spec. Yeah. So that's for tomorrow night that I'll, I'll attend. Yeah, that, that's that's the, one of the key issues for the next week that people understand what's not in the, what's in the alternate. It's easier to say, well, not take the alternates, but I want to make sure people understand what's actually in the alternate list that we, that we are not getting right now. So, um, so we don't have a situation like the high school where people are like, what? I didn't get my X, Y, Z. Um, but I, I think people will, will understand whether, whether they want to give us the extra money. Uh, hopefully they will. And we have a little more flexibility to get the project we want. But um, we'll follow the direction of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, moving on to number seven, public comments. Any, I assume, uh, no more public Yes, no comments. I'm sorry, Raquel, what was that? You broke up a little bit. Sorry, no comments. Okay, great, thank you. Number eight, remarks. Any other remarks, any comments anyone would like to make before our uh, our, our uh, wetland hearing tonight? It's on Zoom, if you, if you would like to join, feel free to jump in. <laughs> Good luck to Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Um, got any other any other remarks? Okay, it's a quick meeting. That's good. So with that, I'd let someone like to make a motion to adjourn. Go ahead, we. <laughs> <laughs> you muted, but we heard you. Well, I can read your lips. And you said made motion to adjourn. George, would like to second. Second, all, right. sure. <laughs> all, all in favor. I know you. I know you got your grandson with you, Woody. So I figured I'll let you go.
Okay, thanks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. I guess that wraps it up. I'll, I'll yeah. see some of you uh, in an hour or so. Take, Take care, care, all. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye.